In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Christ is risen. Alleluia. And he has overcome death. It's Easter Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Siamé, a selection of Don Bosco. Stay tuned. It is Sunday, the 28th of April, 2024, fifth Sunday of Easter. And you know what the message is today? If you want to be productive, if you want to be fruitful in your life, remain attached to Christ. That's it. If you are attached to Christ, you are going to see productivity in your life. Participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Sister Nalunkuma Lois Rose, who celebrated her birthday on the 23rd of this month from Jinja, Uganda, takes for us the first reading. Agata Awo from Nakuru, Kenya, celebrating her birthday today, takes for us the responsorial psalm. Angom Dorothy Ivoni, who celebrated her birthday on the 22nd of this month from London United Kingdom, takes for us the second reading. And proclaiming the gospel is Deacon Edward Mumba from the Archdiocese of Lusaka, Zambia. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those who are pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. He declared to them how on the road he had seen the Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Acts chapter 9, verse 26 to 31. In those days, when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, and they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him, and brought him to the apostles, and declared to them how on the road he had seen the Lord, who spoke to him, and how at Damascus he had preached boldly in the name of Jesus. So he went in and out among them at Jerusalem, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. And he spoke and disputed against the Hellenists, but they were seeking to kill him. And when the brethren knew it, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was built up, and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it was multiplied. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalms 22, 26b to 27, 28 and 30, 31 to 32. Response is taken from Psalms 22, verse 26a. And the response is, You are my praise, Lord, in the great assembly. You are my praise, Lord, in the great assembly. You are my praise, Lord, in the great assembly. You are my praise, Lord, in the great assembly. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and shall have their fill. 
They shall praise the Lord, those who seek him. May their hearts live on forever and ever. You are my praise, Lord, in the great assembly. All the earth shall remember and return to the Lord. All families of the nations worship before him. They shall worship him, all the mighty of the earth. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust. You are my praise, Lord, in the great assembly. And my soul shall live for him. My descendants serve him. They shall tell of the Lord to generations yet to come. Declare his saving justice to peoples yet unborn. These are the things the Lord has done. You are my praise, Lord, in the great assembly. The second reading. This is his commandment that we should believe and love one another. A reading from the first letter of St. John. First John, chapter 3, verse 18 to 24. Little children, let us not love in word or speech, but in deed and in truth. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who keep his commandments abide in him and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit which he has given us, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel Acclamation, taken from John chapter 15 verses 48.5b. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Abide in me and I in you, says the Lord. He who abides in me bears much fruit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. John chapter 15, verse 1 to 8. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that bears no fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already made clean by the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If a man does not abide in me, he is cast forth as a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered thrown into the fire and bent. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last Sunday, we were dealing with Christ the Good Shepherd, and the gospel began like this, I am the Good Shepherd. Today, we are here again dealing with another I am. I am the true vine. I explain to you what good shepherd means. I am the good shepherd. He was not just talking about uh, sentimental things. No, he was talking about uh, ontological reality, the metaphysical reality that he is as a real shepherd, not a fake one. And here again, he uses the word true. 
for those who have done metaphysics and philosophy, you will understand that one true and good are metaphysical properties of being that refer to the fact that one is one when it is and one is good when it is real and one is true when it is real. Nothing can be true if it is not real. Nothing can be good if it is not real. Nothing can be one if it is not real. Mm -hmm. Having said that, we understand that when John uses this term true and good is referring to what is real, contrasting it to what is fake. And so Jesus says, I am the true vine. Before getting into this, I would like to let you understand something about the gospel of St. John. John has a project. The project that he has is to convince people, to make people understand that Jesus Christ is God. And he starts that project from the very first chapter. When he says in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. So John is very clear that his story is about letting us know that Jesus is God. And so the I am is referring to the I am that we find in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. I am who I am. Jesus is the I am. God, Yahweh. And you find seven important I am statements in the gospel of St. John. The first one is found in chapter 6 verse 35. I am the bread of life. And then chapter 8 verse 12, I am the light of the world. Chapter 10 verse 7, I am the door. Chapter 10 verse 11, I am the good shepherd. Chapter 11 verse 35, I am the resurrection and the life. Chapter 14, verse 6, I am the well, the truth, and the life. And today's gospel, I am the true vine. He is all this. And there I am seven times. I am here means he's the perfect God. That's why in the gospel of St. John, we see Jesus using the I am statements. Today is talking about the vine. He is the true vine. And being the true vine, if we want to be fruitful, we must be connected to him. It's all about connectivity to Jesus still, the true vine. All the others are fake vines, is the real one. And understanding that he is the real one, I should avoid anything that is fake. There are so many Christians among us who start very well, very connected to the vine. And on the way when things start becoming rough, they disconnect themselves from the vine. Because they think that there are other true vines. No, there is only one true vine, Christ. All the others are fake. And if you think I am lying, try that witch doctor. If you think I'm not telling you the truth, try that fortune teller. I saw one lady somewhere, I suppose in Nairobi, who is even on TikTok, and she was showing people how charms work. She's not even ashamed to do that. She was even saying, you know, if you take this one, which is not found in this country, you are going to be a very rich person. Is it about that man who is not staying with you? I'm telling you, you are going to get that man back. And the one talking is not even married. 
She's single because I don't think the husband would want her to do that on TikTok. She's even telling people these things work. Fake! Why? That is not true. And she's selling those things. Selling those things because she believes somebody who buys is going to become rich. Now, why are you selling something if you are already rich? Because it must have worked on you, and so you are very rich. Start giving people for free. If you are still doing business and you are advertising that on TikTok, it is a clear sign that you are very poor and those things have never worked and they are as fake as you. Come back to the true vine as well. You are even sometimes comparing that to how prayers work. Come back to the true vine. Christ himself is the true vine and he's saying, listen, if you are cut from him, you will never do anything. And we have so many branches that have been cut from Christ. There are people who have registered themselves at their parishes as belonging to a church. They are even saying proudly Catholic, but they are not practicing at all. They are detached. They are cut off from the real vine. Christ himself. And we see that in the way they conduct their own lives. Somebody who is cut off from the real vine is seen in the way the person lives his or her own life. You know, Christ is saying, abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. There is no way we are going to bear much fruit if we are not connected to Christ. You know, you may thrive for a while. You may look okay for a while having cut off from Christ. Just like any branch that is cut off will be okay for that moment. It will look green. And there are people was still looking green, but that greenness you are seeing is just for a while. They have gone somewhere, they have acquired their wealth, they are comfortable in Freemasonry, they are comfortable in Satanism, they are comfortable in atheism, they are okay, they are looking green, but don't envy them. That greenness is just for a while. If you want to see permanent greenness, see it in a person who is still connected to Christ even when things are rough and tough. There is genuine greenness. There is a genuine smile in a person who never leaves prayer, who never leaves the community of believers, who is ever connected in prayer. That person will laugh a real laughter. That person will not have a moment of joy that we draw from alcohol. You drink, yes. Get drunk, quite all right. Detach from Christ. But in the morning, you get up with your hangovers. When you are attached to Christ, there are no hangovers. People are going to see the same joy they saw you with yesterday when you were in trouble and today when you are now rejoicing, they will see you the same. There is consistency in a person who is attached to Christ and the fruits are seen. Even when people reject you, like in the first reading of today where we see Saul trying to join himself to the community of believers and others fearing to get closer to him because they thought he was still the same man. No, listen, you cannot be the same man. You cannot be the same woman if you find yourself attached to the vine Christ. Something changes. Yes, people may not believe that something has changed, but forget about them. Focus on the vine. Focus on Christ. He's the one you have followed. It is not those people, but those people are going to realize after being with you that you are indeed born of Christ.
You are indeed attached to Christ. You are the branch of Christ because the fruits themselves are going to say it all. We have so many of our believers in our world today who stand for a while and afterwards they fall. And registers in our parishes are showing that we have big numbers of Christians. But those big numbers are not showing in the way we live our lives. The influence is not visible because we tend to be blown by the wind. Whatever comes we follow because we are detached from Christ. Though on paper we may be registered as good Catholics, but we are not. We may be registered as good Methodists, but we are not. As good Anglicans, but we are not. Our world is going to change today if we can have at least half the number of those in the register living the life of Christ. Because being connected to the vine is about living the principles and values of Christ in our lives. The principles of compassion, the principles of love, the principles of forgiveness, the principles of honesty. That people are able to see in us something that shows we are born of the true vine, Jesus Christ himself. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Well, without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Sunday to you. Thanks be to God. Amen.